Zack Zero doesn't look like much of a hero. In fact, he embodies precisely the same kind of generic and forgettable character design that drives me crazy. He looks more like a dorky mailman who hasn't done laundry in a week, so he has to wear a replica superhero suit he bought at a comic book shop instead. If this were a cartoon, I'd turn off the channel and make fun of it on the internet. The thing about Zack Zero, however, is that his world isn't that vanilla. And as a result, his video game actually succeeds despite its own shortcomings. Zack Zero's been in development for a long time. In fact, it's been on the radar for almost three years now, an ambitious project from a rookie developer called Crocodile Entertainment. It's finally come to the PlayStation Network, and after several years in the cooker, Zack Zero has emerged a fairly pleasant surprise. The game follows the story of Zack Zero, a hero who sets off to rescue his damsel in distress, a lame story befitting such a lame character, but fortunately, this is a platform game, a genre in which story is generally pretty meaningless. The strengths of Zack Zero are its beautiful vistas and its fun use of perspective, and its gameplay is, well, decent. Zack Zero is a kind of 2.5D platformer, a game that side-scrolls but also uses depth. There's a primary level of play, but you can also move into pathways beyond that. It's a concept that dates back to the original PlayStation and games like Klonoa, and it's really become popular in modern platformers, but while it is a nice addition to Zack Zero, the game doesn't quite pull it off as well as its peers. And that's because it's often difficult to move from one layer to the next. The locations where you can do it aren't entirely clear either, so you might find yourself trying to climb a rock that's off the main path, even though you actually can't. I had some similar annoyances with the combat as well. The game essentially uses typical button mashing attacks, which gets a little dull, but the real issue is that you're often ambushed by enemies that come from deeper layers of the level. They just pop out at you so fast, you don't have time to react. You just get killed, which means you have to endure a little trial and error at times. But the gameplay is, again, perfectly decent. It even adds three different abilities you can switch between Ben 10 style, but they're all very standard. It's, I mean, it's not a bad game by any means, it's just nothing special in terms of its controls and core gameplay mechanics. But the game earns bonus points and gets nudged above average thanks to its awesome environments. Zack Zero has to traverse some pretty spectacular alien vistas, worlds brought to life with great art and fitting visual effects. The game puts a really nice blur on objects in the distance, which creates a nice sense of depth and also complements the game's 2.5D nature. And for a game that's inherently linear, Zack Zero has a world that feels huge. Of course, that is an illusion, but so is the game itself in a sense. You see these interesting worlds and gorgeous views, and you might think it's something more than just a solid platformer. There's nothing wrong with being a solid platformer, and Zack Zero certainly is one, but it's also a textbook case of style over substance. <laughs> 